I noticed some of you noticing the 3D printable wheels. Well, the, the wheels in general, not necessarily. You didn't know they were 3D printable until I just told you. And then it's like, oh yeah, it turns out they're 3D printable. So for me, the 3D printer that I have, it's a Prusa i3. It's been a really solid printer. Uh, I had a MakerBot clone before that. MakerBot went in a direction that mm, perhaps wasn't the best, but the Prusa bot maker Prusa 3D printer thing, I've been pretty happy with. And I made 3D printable wheels. And that may seem like wizardry, but it's actually not. It's super, super accessible. I mean, Adam came down, you know, he posts Fox, and we uh, uh, looked at it and I went through sort of the modeling process with him. And afterwards he was like, wow, that seems a lot more accessible than I thought it was. And I didn't really think about it, but I'm not great at 3D modeling. It's something that I've practiced, but I thought it was a little bit of a black art myself. So my first prototype literally just, it looks like a red Lego, like some sort of horrible Dr. Frankenstein Lego. But I've got these pegs, like a big peg and a small peg and this little divot. And that kind of mimics the regular foot on the Fractal Define 7. Because the Fractal Define 7, it's a big boy case. I'm running big boy Threadripper in it with a big video card and a nice four terabyte, two and a half inch NVMe hard drive and you know, just all the accoutrement. And uh, that case was so large and so unwieldy that I thought, man, this thing needs wheels. That should, that should be an accessory. That should be a thing that you can do. So I tinkered with it. And this is sort of the first prototype I came up with. It's basically just a block to hold a wheel. And these worked okay. Uh, on hardwood floors, it's fine because it doesn't really torque too much. But on carpet, where carpet's a little more resistive, it really sort of tugs on the screw hole of the case. So it's really not an ideal situation. So this tub are all the different iterative designs that I went through. And I thought it might be interesting to take a look at that. So most of the time I use very, very simple CAD tools. Like I actually had a lot of training and used to do a lot of stuff with AutoCAD and AutoLisp. And that is a dimension of crazy that you just, we don't even, like you don't need to do that. But you can visualize how the part is in your head and then literally just punch in coordinates and extrude things in 3D. And if you are capable of visualizing that in your head, you have a really easy time with that kind of a CAD system but there's a sort of a free-ish CAD system online called Tinkercad, which lets you just sort of build things from primitive shapes. And I think you can do this with, uh, uh, with OpenSCAD, uh, but OpenSCAD was a little bit obtuse when I first started using it. And it's like, this is more than I deserve in terms of functionality. So maybe I can just deal with this in terms of simple shapes. And so you can get a better idea of how this shape evolves. I mean, this was literally just a rectangle and I just cut a slice out of it for the uh, dust filter on the fractal and then I put a couple of cylinders of the appropriate diameter I just use a dial caliper and take the measurements and and see what the size should be And then this divot is the same kind of a thing I mean the fractal feet were injection molded So there wasn't exactly a divot in the fractal feet But there there was sort of a recessed area to mate up to the case where it screws in for the foot So yeah first first iteration not bad very basic and then you know it sort of evolved I made it a little bit bigger which would give it a little bit more support on the case. So when it rocks, it's you know getting a little bit more mechanical support on the case. But honestly, this still wasn't great. Um, then I experimented with you know different multiple sets of holes. So this one has two sets of holes, and I also introduced holes into the pegs. So the fractal case comes with zip strips, uh, zip ties, whatever you want to call them, and I made a uh, a curved canal through the foot that you can insert the zip strip and this will actually go inside your fractal case. So you can screw the foot in place, but you can also zip tie it for a little bit more mechanical stability. And the case I thought was a little unstable. So I moved the feet as far out as I possibly could. And so this is sort of the final form, the final foot that I ended up with. This is a very hollow one. So it's not, it's not structurally very awesome. So I've got the, the holes for the zip tie and I've got the screw holes so that you can screw the screw in really easily. And then I've got the, standoff for the foot. And that is the final model, this is the downloadable model, if you want to 3D print some feet for your Fractal Define 7. And it'll also work for the Define 7 XL. This model was super easy to put together because it's just, it's just a big cylinder. And then I did some sort of reverse edges here and just added, you know, it's just Boolean addition basically, adding these different shapes together. And with a 3D printer, this sort of curved shape mechanically is a lot more strong 
than this sort of cubicle shape. And if you look at how your 3D printer sort of will print the infill, depending on how much infill you print, you know, it starts out with very simple infill patterns, but the Prusa software will actually sort of uh, print a, sort of a toroidal uh, internal shape, it's a curved shape, and that actually makes these things very, very strong mechanically. So you can print these with like a 20 or 25 percent infill and stand on them. It will literally strip the threads out of your fractal case before the 3D printed material fails. It's that strong. So the zip tie helps in that case because uh, I was, I might have been riding the, the Fractal Define 7 XL case around the uh, around the office like a unicorn. We don't, we don't have B-roll of that. And so that kind of leads me to the second thing that I 3D printed, which is, you know, having the big fancy NVMe, uh, hot plugging these or, you know, you can mount them on the two and a half inch drive, but the cable in the back here is kind of bulbous and sort of uh, un unwelcoming to work with. And so I made this sled, it looks a little bit like something from Star Wars, doesn't it? I made this sled and the sled is designed to have the U.2 cable sort of zip tied here on the end. And there's little divots in the plastic that will grab on and hold the U.2 connector. And so the drive will just slide in like this. And then this will mechanically mount, this bit of plastic will mechanically mount to the bottom of the case, just like a regular two and a half inch hard drive. So at the bottom of my Fractal Define 7 XL, I've got basically, it's not exactly hot swap, but I've got an easily mechanically accessible where I can just slide my drive out and, and slide it in, which is handy because I switch operating systems a lot or I need to do testing and blah, blah, blah. And while I might have more than one Threadripper 3000 system, I'm only going to have one of the 64 core systems. So if I need to swap things out, I'm not gonna swap the processors. That's too much headache. It's too much work. I'm just gonna pop the SSD out and pop it into another system. So like if I need to, you know, I don't know, slum it for a while with only the 24 or the 32 core while I'm doing a 64 compile test for a video, I can just roll another machine in there, slide my SSD out, slide this one in, and I'm good to go. And there's, there's not really a lot to show you with how this works on Tinkercad because once you actually start tinkering with it, uh, see what I did? Then you will be able to do a lot of the same things that, that I did because this, if you look at it, these are just boxes and then I turned a box at 45 degrees to, to sort of angle this, this corner. I printed this, this is just a regular box. These are subtraction cylinders. This is a subtraction cylinder turned on its side, which is a little channel for the, um, uh, for the zip tie so that you can zip tie the connector down. And so you have this fancy, you know, U.2 connector that provides both power and NVMe, and then everything else is just a mechanical connection. And it works great in the bottom of the, the Fractal Define 7 case. It'll work in the back if you don't want it to be easily accessible. It'll work pretty much anywhere that you've got room for a two and a half inch drive that's extra, 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 extra tall. And the model for that is on the Level 1 website, so you can download it and print it and you know do whatever you do whatever you want with it but I like having that flexibility of being able to remove my my SSD and and also not to be confined with uh, you know whatever fractal can dream up I can invent my own accessories thank you very much so yeah I've been I really have enjoyed having wheels on the uh, on the fractal case it's it's pretty nice and the two and a half inch thing will work for pretty much any case because it uses two and a half inch screw so unless like the thumb screw or something gets in the way um, you should be able to use that with NZXT or any other case that has like those little two and a half inch trays that you can sort of put in the bottom of the case and Tinkercad is how I put it together so you can mix and match this mesh design your own accessories whatever you want to do. I thought about, this is a little too fancy, but because the Define 7 XL has got those two five and a quarter inch bays at the top, I thought about doing an array of these so that uh, you could insert, you know, like four or six two and a half inch U.2 drives in the top in those two five and a quarter inch bays. There's enough room for that. That would be pretty slick, pretty badass. I think I could probably do that. So if anybody's thinking about Define, buying the Define 7 XL for a server-ish case, and they want like a four or six bay, two and a half inch NVMe for the top. Uh, Cause I don't think there's something like that already on the market even. Just zip tying those U.2 cables in place and having the M.2 breakout cables. I think that would work fine. So I'm Wendell, this is level one. This is how I did the 3D printable wheels and uh, removable U.2, you know, two and a half inch NVMe uh, drive sled thingies. 
I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later. Engagement Challenge, what 3D printable accessory have you been looking for? Because I might be able to cobble something together, I just haven't thought of it yet, but if you have anything that's cool, let me know. See ya. I'm probably an idiot for going through so many iterations. I mean, it's just a foot. Like, why didn't, why didn't I come up with this? To begin with. This is so much simpler and cleaner and better. I'm an idiot.